So let's examine the following example in which we have to implement the conservation of energy law. Now we can no longer use the conservation of mechanical energy because now we're considering non-conservative forces such as friction. So let's begin. Suppose a roller coaster car starts at a height of 50 meters above ground and travels down a curve and back up to a maximum height of 30 meters. So the initial velocity is zero meters and the final velocity is zero meters. Now if the car traveled a total distance of 500 meters, so this distance is 500 meters, we want to find the energy dissipated into internal energy, into thermal energy, and we also want to calculate the average frictional force acting on our car between the coaster, the surface of the coaster, and the roller coaster car. So let's assume the mass of the car is 1,500 kilograms. So once again, let's examine what happens. So initially, our car begins with no kinetic energy and only gravitational potential energy. Now at the end, our car ends up with less gravitational potential energy because some of that mechanical energy has been transformed into internal energy, into thermal energy, and we want to calculate what that amount is. So let's begin by writing our law of conservation of energy. The sum of the mechanical energy in the initial system is equal to the sum of the mechanical energy in the final system plus the change in thermal energy, the change in internal energy of our object and the coaster. So let's rewrite this equation using the following equation. So our kinetic energy initial becomes our one-half mv initial squared. Our initial gravitational potential energy becomes mghi squared, where hi is simply 50 meters, equals one-half mv final squared plus mgh final, where h final is 30 meters, plus what we're looking for, the change in our thermal energy. So notice V initial and V final are zero meters each. So that means our initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy are both zero. And M is 1500 kilograms, G is 9.8 meters per second squared, HI is 50 meters, and the HF is 30 meters. And this is our unknown. So we solve for the unknown and we see that change in thermal energy or change in internal energy of our system is equal to this sum minus this sum equals 294,000 joules of energy. So this is how much energy is transformed from gravitational potential energy into thermal energy which is due to friction. So now we'd like to find the average force of friction. So we know that the total displacement, the total distance our object travels is 500 meters. And we know that as long as we assume we have an average frictional force, we can use the following equation. The work done is equal to the average frictional force multiplied by our displacement. So we know displacement and we know the work done, which is this amount. So this is equal to our average force we're trying to find multiplied by 500 meters. So we divide both sides by 500 and we find that the average frictional force is equal to 588 newtons. So once again, we're choosing the average force because when this object travels along our coaster, the frictional force varies. It's not constant. And so that's exactly why we're asking to find the average force because the frictional force is actually not entirely constant.